A very good evening to you. It's just a few minutes past 5 p.m. East African time and 5 p.m. on Metropole TV means markets today. My name is Nina Shiban, ready to take you through what's going on in the world of stocks and business at large. Now we start off with Kenya's inflation shot up by 6.58% year on year in April from 4.35% a month earlier due to rising food, electricity and fuel prices. Now, according to the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, inflation was at 3.51%, up from 1.60% in March. The food and non-alcoholic index rose uh, to 6.86% month on month in April from 3.30% at the previous month, the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics said in a statement. A national carrier Kenya Airways posted a pre-tax loss of 7.59 billion Kenyan shillings in the 12 months ended in December. Its pre-tax loss narrowed to 7.59 billion shillings from 9.44 billion. The airline, which is 7.8% owned by Air France, KLM, however, reported a rise in annual revenue on Tuesday while trimming its pre-tax loss. The national carrier reported revenue of 1.5%. 114.545 billion shillings for the 12 months to December 31st, up from 106.17 billion a year earlier. The airline was forced to restructure 2 billion worth of debt in late 2017 after a slump in Kenyan travel following a militant attacks. Meanwhile, Equity Group Holdings has entered into discussions with London-listed financial services firm Atlas Mara Limited to buy stakes in banks in Rwanda, Zambia, Mozambique and Tanzania. The listed company has said it will swap its shares for a 62% stake in Banque Populaire uh, de Rwanda as well as a 100% stake in African banking corporations banking subsidiaries in Zambia, Tanzania and Mozambique. In a statement, Equity Group Holdings Group Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer Dr. James Mwangi has said Equity Group will be able to expand um, its footprint in Africa through the acquisition of the banks. Dr. Mwangi has further said Equity Group aims, uh, quote unquote, to provide access to competitive tailored financial services to improve people's lives and livelihoods, whilst also delivering significant value to its stakeholders. Listed real estate firm Home Africa has received regulatory approval from the Capital Markets Authority to delay the publication of the company's audited financial results for the financial year ended 31st December 2018 that was due for publication today. The company says the delay was necessitated by initiatives that the company took to strengthen its capital base and the Home Africa CEO Dan Awando says this efforts will have an impact on the company's financial statements and requisite disclosures to shareholders and potential investors of the company. He's, he has said the company will publish its financial results on or before the 31st of July 2019. All right, now the Kenyan shilling has strengthened against the dollar on Tuesday with inflows from offshore investors buying government debt and diaspora remittances, supplying and month dollar demand from the energy and manufacturing sector, traders has told Reuters. Now, commercial banks quoted the shilling at 101.10 buying, 101.30 selling per dollar compared with 101.30 buying, 101.50 selling at Monday's close. Now, let's take a look at the day's indicative exchanging rates selected currencies. <music>
All right, that's all we have prepared for you from the newsroom when it comes to market stocks and a business at large. But remember, we always have segments that we, we have to have this discussion. And our topic of discussion today, um, apart from the what has been going on in the NSC, is of course KQ and its recent report. And we're also going to take a look at uh, the CPI on inflation and inflation, sorry. So let's take a quick break as you take a look at the NSC indices. All right, welcome back. You're still watching Markets Today right here on Metropole TV with yours truly, Nina Shaban. Now, very quickly, I want us to take a look at the indices. If they could quickly show on our screens. Now, um, we have the NSE 20 share that settled at a, a low of 0.33% as compared to a high of 0.45% at the closing bell yesterday. Uh, the NSC 25 share that has settled on 0.12%, that's a low of 0.12%, as compared to a high, uh, uh, another low, sorry, of 0.458% yesterday. And the NSC all share in this that settled at 0.046%, um, as compared to yesterday's closing bell, that it settled on 0.20%. Two seven, sorry, percent. Now joining me is Marshall Nyangar, who is a research analyst at uh, Zimele Asset Management Limited. A very, very good evening to you. Thank you so much for gracing us with your presence. Good evening, Nina. Good evening. Now, um, Marshall, I'll start off by asking before we go to the gainers and the losers. I'll start off by asking what caught your eye when it comes to the. Um, the, the 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 trading that went on today at the Nairobi Stock Exchange. Or would you prefer if I went through the gainers and losers first? No, we can talk about uh, probably the trading today. All right. It was quite a busy day. Uh, mm -hmm. First of all, I think there was a lot of signal and acti activities. Mm -hmm. uh, biggest, for example, coming from uh, Equity Bank, uh, signaling that they have intention of uh, increasing their presence in the in the sub-Saharan -Afri sub Africa. Mm. Uh, then, in terms of the financials, we saw. Uh, several companies uh, issuing their financials, so uh, 
uh, Kenya Airways, of mm -hmm. course, increasing their losses mm -hmm. to seven point billions. Mm -hmm. uh, Mumia Sugar was also there. Samia Africa, Express Kenya, Express all of Kenya them are actually yeah. coming with the losses this, uh, this day. So probably it's not, it was not a very good uh, day at the Nairobi Securities Exchange in terms of uh, the announcements that came. Mm -hmm. uh, but overall, I think the activity was normal. We just read the indices. Mm -hmm. um, there, were, there were virtually no changes because we're talking of less than 1% uh, either gains or losses in terms right. of the indices. So, yes, probably that was the days today. All right. Now, uh, getting down to gainers and the losers, um, if you guys also have that on our, showing on our screens, we have Express Limited. Uh, that is, 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 that's so an upgrade by 10%. A Trans Century Limited so an upgrade by 6.29%. Samir Africa Limited uh, so an upgrade by 5%. Longhorn Kenya Limited so an upgrade by 3.63%. And Stanbeck Holdings so an upgrade by 3.37%. On to the losers, Cooperative Bank of Kenya, so downgrade by 7.01%. Housing Finance Group Limited, so downgrade of 6.74%. Bamburi Cement Limited, another downgrade of 6.51%. KCB, that's Kenya Commercial Bank, so a downgrade by of 5.78%. Of and Stanley Fahari. So a downgrade of 5.08%. Anything that has caught your eye when it comes to... Well, I think uh, probably, uh, probably just talk, talk the, about the Express Kenya mm -hmm. that uh, was the highest gainer. Uh, looking at, uh, uh, when you look at, when you approach it from the technical analysis point of view, we want to look at the price in terms of gain and that's so the volumes traded. Mm -hmm. So we find that uh, Express Kenya only traded 300 shillings, 300 shares, uh, each share being around five shillings. That mm. could, in terms of volume, could be around one 1,500. So probably it may not really be a big issue. The impact in, is not yeah, that big. The, the impact is not that big. Uh, again, Tencentury, that was the second one, again also trade volume was 300 shares. So probably in terms of the gains today, uh, there's really the two, the, the, the biggest two, there's no much to talk about them, just probably one or two individuals mm. uh, who, has, who have probably seen something good in the shares. And, I know, and you know, the Express uh, gaining uh, when they were just actually announced a loss. The, you find that, uh, for example, their revenue dropped from 50 million, 50 million uh, I think, the period last year, mm -hmm. uh, to 2017, to around 25 million. So if you want to ask yourself, if this is a company that is losing in revenue, and again, even the bottom line, the profitability is also, the loss increased. Uh, so wh why would somebody be buying that kind of a, but again, that's really the market <laughs> for you. It is uh, the market. But overall, looking at the bottom side, the cooperative was there. Mm -hmm. Cooperative, I uh, think that today it was their uh, dividend, ex-dividend debt, they're closing the books. Mm -hmm. So probably from today it was trading um, ex-dividend and probably it could be attributed to just a market adjustment. Mm -hmm. Uh, KCB was also there. We know KCB is also in the in the process of acquiring a national bank and probably increasing their, their presence in Kenya. Yeah. Uh, but in recent time, KCB had moved from uh, I think uh, 40 shillings to around 44 mm -hmm. by yesterday. So it's just I can see the market is breathing. Uh, where because stocks never really move up straight line. They always up down up down up down. It's always so a zigzag. So that could yeah that could be what we are seeing in. Uh, some of those banking stocks uh, that are seeing the bottom. All right, yes. now, um, uh, Marshall, I'd like us to focus in on KQ. Yes. What's your take on the results that were announced today by the Kenya Airways? Yes, I think, um, uh, to be honest, they are disappointing, and uh, for better part of the day, KQ has actually been trending in Kenya. We know KQ had uh, done a proposal to acquire um, uh, the airport management in Kenya. Yes. Uh, that's, that's a uh, lot of wrangles. Yes, yeah. it has, of course, it's a big issue. Yeah. And now we're wondering if they continue making this kind of losses, then how can they really face Kenyans to tell them that we can even take bigger mm -hmm. uh, assignments in Kenya? Uh, KQ, uh, last year's losses, as fortunately these year's losses are higher than last year. Than last year's. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we had hoped that losses were reducing as to the point that probably they're going to, mm -hmm. by 2020, start making profit again. Uh, but looking at what happened today, uh, that doesn't look like it's the case. They have actually attributed to attributed loss to the increase in the fuel cost. Yes. Uh, in the recent times, it's true they fuel has increased, but again, uh, airlines 
and other consumers that use a lot of fuel usually uh, adopt uh, strategies to manage their fuel, especially mm -hmm. the der mm -hmm. derivatives. So for KQ, it looks like it's clearly not working. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so it's a bit issue of concern to Kenyans. They also ascribed it to the fact that they have more of liabilities than assets. What exactly does that mean? If you could kindly just expand for us. Uh, yes, that could also be true. But uh, uh, it's, you remember uh, back to before 2017, uh, KQ actually went into uh, a swap, a debt swap, yeah, yeah. where the banks and other lenders that had uh, given it loans, converted their, um, their loans or liabilities into shares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that one, that was like a point of turning around. Uh, but again, if now, because, uh, well, they usually get some lending just to bail them out. Mm -hmm. uh, but it looks like because of these losses that are keep on recurring, uh, they're not really able to uh, to go to the positive side. And that's why, for example, the liability seems to be increasing. Uh, and, yes. and, and they have a plan to revive it. Is this plan, would you say this plan is on course? Will we ever have our pride of Africa back? Uh, well, it's a question that uh, I'll also just be asking because uh, uh, when we sit down in the management, they keep on talking of these big plans, mm -hmm. uh, that they have positive outlook and probably the turnaround plan. Uh, but uh, looking at the trend for the last, since, for example, the chairman uh, took over, mm -hmm. um, the, yes, the, the loss decreased from high, used to be over 20 billion loss to, we're not talking of seven, six, mm -hmm, around there. Mm -hmm. But we really wanted to go to the post, just as we have said. Yeah. Uh, they have their own strategies of, uh, of managing the airline. For example, uh, we there's been a complaint in the market, for example, that the KQ uh, tickets are very expensive. Mm -hmm. I know they're in very competitive market because they're competing against uh, air, airlines from Middle East, yeah, Air Qatar, yeah. so on and so forth. So you keep on wondering if you want to price your ticket the most expensive one in the region, will you really? How, how exactly uh, do yes. you think you? But they have the only reason they say that they provide premium services and so on and so forth. So it's on their own strategy, but clearly so far it's not working. So probably if I was uh, one of their consultants, unfortunately I'm not. I'll advise them to really look at their plan. They need to look for you, Michelle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they probably need to look for you. <laughs> now, Michelle, I'd like us to shift gears to the banking sector. Um, so we have equity. What exactly would, is your take when it comes to equity group holdings plan to venture into Rwanda, Tanzania, Mozambique, and Zambia? Yes, first maybe just give an overall um, take on the banking industry as a whole in Kenya before even uh, narrowing down to equity. I think it has been a very, very interesting year. First of all, you are seeing many banks trying to merge yes. uh, and acquiring other banks. So acquisition and merger seems to be very big in the banking sector. Mm -hmm. We have just seen the process of yeah, the CBA and NIC still ongoing, mm -hmm. uh, KCB and uh, National Bank, and then today Equity Bank surprised us that, yes, we are solid in our plan to be the biggest and the most preferred lender in sub-Saharan Africa. Yeah. And for that, we're acquiring 100% stake in African Banking Corporation. They live in Zambia, Mozambique, Tanzania, and again, I think 68% of other banks in, in, in Rwanda. So, well, it's a good news, uh, of course, coming in, um, coming, with, of course, with the... Would you say they're being over-ambitious? Well, you'll not really say so, because uh, mm -hmm. before they take this step, I think uh, the their management must have really thought it through mm -hmm. and done their valuations and seen uh, opportunities because otherwise at the level of equity don't expect people to just uh, rush to decisions mm -hmm. and again i uh, think uh, they had also uh, said this that it, they had this intention for a very long time for years they've been saying that we want to increase our presence in mm -hmm. sub-saharan africa and mm -hmm. as we talk for example the last year's revenue we find that 15 percent were from their activities presence in uganda rwanda South Sudan and Tanzania, they're already present there already. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and we find that 15% of their revenue was contribution from this company, these mm -hmm. countries. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they're increasing their presence, um, because they believe that they have the best technology and they understand the sub-African market better. These countries currently, you'll be surprised that uh, the biggest banks there are owned mostly by European countries. Yeah. So here is an African country, a Kenyan, uh, uh, sorry, African bank, a Kenyan bank, that believe that they understand the population better mm -hmm. and they believe that they have a competitive chance. So they're saying that we want to try the market there. So for me, I, I, I'll give them a chance. All right. Now, um, going back into what happened at the NSC today, the, the, the different activities, I mean, you just mentioned, and I mean, we have just seen that equity 
Uh, so um, it was one of the top gainers, as opposed to KCB and uh, Cooperative. Would you say uh, equities gain has anything to do with KCBs and Cooperative Bank's um, loss today? Well, the equities gain, uh, first of all, we we'll, we'll mostly attribute it to, it's actually 2% in terms of volume because of over 600, around 650 something million shares were mm -hmm. traded. Mm -hmm. So it's a big volume actually. Yeah. The biggest uh, mover today was actually Equity Bank. Yeah. The gain we could mostly attribute it to this news of uh, mergers and acquisition mm -hmm. of some African, mm -hmm. those banks. Uh, Yes, of course, uh, you know, shareholders always have to shift loyalties. You're always looking at the shares that are most likely to give you the yeah. most returns. In the, so probably some share, shareholders could, be, could have moved from some of these banks, disposed their uh, shares and went to equity. That could, this is a possibility. But again, we must also understand that um, looking at, for example, the trends 2017, 2018, 2018, mm -hmm. mostly 2016, 2017, 2017, 2018, equity share and uh, equity stocks and, uh, and KCB stocks have always been equals. Mostly difference has been one shilling or cents. Mm. Uh, but in the recent part, part uh, this uh, last month, when the when the KCB announced that they are going in BK, mm -hmm. they gained up to 44, leaving equity stock at 40. And now today they are coming down slightly a bit as equity increasing. So, uh, well, I don't know why, but those stocks have always been very close. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. And um, now, getting out of the stocks and looking at a, a wider aspect of how KCB is doing, um, would you say equity is surpassing KCB? Not really. Equity, we cannot really say so because uh, you remember that these are banks that are venturing into new territory. So, so until you start seeing the yield or the dividends, yeah, yeah. it's when you can actually be confident that equity is surpassing KCB or mm -hmm. KCB is surpassing equity. Then, uh, for example, talking of the latest now uh, acquisition, uh, the equity is talking of the swap of stocks, uh, share stock. There is actually, well, equity might pump in some money later on, yes, mm -hmm. it's true, but uh, currently we're not seeing external shareholders or big financiers coming to finance this acquisition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in terms of asset uh, valuation, uh, there might no, there might no changes at the end of the day in terms of asset value of equity uh, assets versus KCB asset. Mm -hmm. Currently, KCB is still higher. Yes, but so I think uh, they still need to do more and uh, probably once they get into these markets, try to get new customers. And um, I'm sure KCB will also be doing something else. So, so that at the end of the day, uh, I think for us as a country, it's good because two banks are moving regional mm -hmm. and are uh, getting their footprint. So as, as a country, it is a good move. Yes. But um, just lastly, so that we can sh shut this down, um, what does this mean for the equity investors? The, you mean like, uh, investors in the equity stocks? In the investors in the equity stocks. Yes, I yeah. think they have all reasons to be happy because um, the management is doing everything to increase the value of their stocks yeah. and that's at the end of the day that's what if you go if you're an investor into the market you really want to see uh, the the value of your wealth increasing and if that is what the management of equity bank is doing probably by tr gaining new market mm -hmm. new territories new partners and new everything i think uh, the stockholders of equity shares have all reasons to smile all right yes yeah, thank you so much michelle mm -hmm. that was um michelle Nyongor, who is a uh, research analyst from Zimele Assets. I do know that we are going to be seeing you soon. So do enjoy the rest of your evening. Tomorrow is a public holiday. Thank you. It's, Thank you it's time to rest, eh? Yes, and uh, happy uh, uh, it's Labor Day Labor tomorrow. Day. It's yeah. Labor Day. Trust Kenyans. You don't know the holiday. You know it's a holiday, but you just don't know what holiday it is. <laughs> All right, let's take a quick break, but we shall be coming back with more. We're going to delve deeper into KQ and also look at the rise in inflation. All right, welcome back to Markets Today.
Now, the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics has announced an increase in inflation to 6.53% uh, in the month of April. To help us unpack this latest announcement is a resident, actually, at Metropole TV, Faith Miner, an investment analyst. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank Good you evening. for having me. You look a tad bit tired. Hey, it's working. Yeah, <laughs> it's, 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 it's also showing you. You must have been working really hard today, but thank you for coming through either way. Now, Faith, what's your reading of the latest inflation numbers uh it's a little bit above what we had expected mm -hmm. and uh, it's mostly because of the food and then alcoholic beverages yeah. inflation that yeah. went up by almost seven percent mm -hmm. uh, month on month uh so the inflation is it's just about 7%, and yeah, yeah. you know the government target is 7.25. However, we hope, given that it rained in April, we hope that the inflation is going to ease as we go on, if mm -hmm. the rains at least persist. All right. So would you say there's a cause for worry? Uh, yeah, maybe a little, because mm -hmm. uh, the short rains that were expected uh, were late, and there was drought in most places in Kenya, which has affected the prices of goods. Mm -hmm. And you also expect that uh, the production of things like maize will uh, be affected as well. So by mm -hmm. the end of the year, mm -hmm. so we expect uh, across the year we'll have, we'll feel the impact of uh, the rains being late. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was a significant jump in inflation. Yes, it was, uh, given that in the last month we were at uh, about 4% of inflation, and now we have jumped almost to 7%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Now we're hoping that, of course, um, we'll be reading something different as of next month. Now, away from Marta's inflation, KQ has reported a 7.5 billion shilling loss in 2018. Yes. Now, looking at the company's trend for the past few years, is KQ looking up? What exactly has attributed to this loss in detail? We had, in our previous interview, of course, we touched a bit on KQ, but yeah. now we want to get down to the detail. What has attributed to the loss? Uh, mostly expenses, uh, and it's always the expenses for KQ. Mm -hmm. And we saw them restructure in 2017, so they've been trying to cut down on their expenses. Mm -hmm. However, they had, uh, as they, asked, they mentioned today during the release, they said that the cost of uh, oil and fuel, fuel was fuel, yeah. was one of the things that cost their um, the loss. The loss of 7.5 billion. Yes. yes. If you look at their performance compared to last year, whatever they reported last year was a loss of 6.41 billion but shillings. in nine months. But in nine months. Yes. yes. And now it's 7.5 billion shillings, uh, but in 12 months. So we, there's no way of give, uh, giving an actual comparison, but maybe that maybe it's a little bit of an improvement. Mm -hmm. Though we can't mm -hmm. be able to tell exactly. If you look at their revenue, their revenue actually increased from uh, 80 billion to 114 billion yes. which is a good uh, 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 an increase mm -hmm. so if kq is able to actually curb its expenses i think it would be able to get itself back on track eventually so it 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 is going to be able to regain its position yes eventually but it's going to take a lot of restructuring and cost cutting okay yeah. now they've mentioned they as you said they have to regain their position now they've mentioned that there was an increment in um Passenger revenue. Yeah. How will they ensure that it, they they keep a constant growth, regardless of all the obstacles that we've just mentioned right now, fuel prices, expenses? How will they ensure, from where you sit, they'll 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 just keep a constant growth to ensure that the investors always laugh their way to the bank? I think it's important for them to uh, just keep the good name they have, uh, so that they they are customers can always be willing to fly now with them. that's going into matters marketing. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then number two, we saw them launch uh, a number of flights this year, mm -hmm. which I think has boosted the uh, revenue. So maybe just keeping ahead of the curve compared, because we, we're seeing even their competition is also increasing, given that Uganda is uh, launched their, launched, yes. yeah, their airline as well. So mm -hmm. they have to stay ahead of the curve and ensure that they maintain their clients and yeah, give the best service. Okay, and even as you as we shut down this interview, if you took a, if you take a look at KQ inside just a bit, what do you think of how the structure management is? Uh, given the restructure in the last few years, mm -hmm. I think the management is has really improved. If you look at their corporate governance uh, structure, it has really improved as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So I think it's on the right track given where they've come from and where they are headed. And their board has been structured as well. So uh, then the members of the board now are, are people who have experience in uh, building businesses and making them grow. So I think KQ has a good future as long as they are able to structure, reduce their expenses, and maintain their uh, clients.
Okay. Yeah. What about the merger with JKIA? Uh, their merger that would uh, require uh, confidence, as the previous uh, in interviewers uh, interview said. Mm -hmm. um, given that if a company is making losses and you're telling us you want to merge with uh, JKIA, then uh, how are you, are you going to ensure that you manage the cost as well for that mm -hmm. other organization? So it's important for them to show that they are capable of uh, managing both businesses so as well. So from where you said, is it a good move? It would be a good move if it's going to uh, help them increase their revenue and maybe increase their efficiency. But then that is something we are not able to see, given that we, are, we don't have the numbers for both JKIA. Uh, we, we don't have the numbers for JKIA as well. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much. That was uh, Faith Maina, who is an investment analyst. Faith, we'll be seeing you soon. Yes, definitely. We will. Yeah. So, um, how about you just go and enjoy your one-day holiday? Unfortunately, it's not the ones that have pushed have been pushed closer to the weekend. Yeah, it's a midweek holiday. It's a midweek holiday. <laughs> we have to get back to work on Thursday. Yeah. Thank you so much for keeping it markets today, right here on Metropole TV. My name is Nina Shaban. Please don't go anywhere. We have lots of programming lined up your way. And I'll be back at 7 p.m. with our 7 p.m. news.